Food futurologist Dr. Morgan Gay is with us on Showcase today. Morgan, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you on our show today. Thank you so much. Lovely to be here. Tell me what a food futurologist is. Well, years ago when I first started doing it, nobody had a clue. But now people are becoming a little bit more familiar with the fact that when foods are made and designed and produced, it takes years from ideation, from the moment it's thought about, to actual conception when it goes onto the shelf. And that's usually about two to three years for big organisations. And my job is to work with those organisations and tell them what we're going to be eating in five years' time and help them to get there. So really giving them a sense of what people will be interested in, who we are, what will really be the motivating factor to make us buy this thing and not that thing. So we think that we know what normal is because it's what we're doing right now, but what we're doing in the future is something that most people can't really think about and don't really want to accept when we talk about things like, we'll be eating insects or things that people think, I'll never do that, and then of course they do. So that's my job really, is to look at everything from fashion to interiors to design, geopolitics, economics, everything that trend embraces and then distill that for predominantly food-related businesses. How do you predict what's going to be in in the next five years? Five years is a long time. Sometimes it has to even be further out than that and I have to be fairly accurate. So I look at all sorts of things like I mentioned, so it has to really tie in. It's not just a little bit of a fantasy idea that I might have. I have to really underpin that with some research. But I think it starts off with a hunch. I start to have little hunches, thoughts, notice little things, and then try to find a similar thought or idea across categories. So from how people behave to what people might be watching on TV. And then I try to start getting a little feeling. Then I start writing about it and doing lots of research to see if I can prove or disprove that this thing is going to be good. And you have a whole team that works on this as well with you. I have lots of different people all over the world who I might just say, have a look at this, I think this is good. And also I have to go there myself. Okay, so tell me about some of the um, major trends that, wa that we had in 2017. So that's, re that's the hardest question for me because I have no idea because that for me is like asking me about 2012 because that's when I was talking about 2017. Oh, wow. So I can't remember 2017, because <laughs> it's like five years ago for me. So I can talk about 2018. OK. How will that, that's, because yeah. that still hasn't fully happened. So, so, well, and also one of the things, when I talk about trends, proper trends, they aren't fads. So we, we you know, media loves a fad. So mm -hmm. what's the big thing? So, for example, yesterday in Istanbul, I went into a shop and the guy wanted to show me all of his soaps. And one of them was carbon or charcoal. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, oh my goodness, this is going to be huge next year. Because black food, black things, charcoal itself as a flavour, charcoal lattes will be big. Move away from the matcha latte, the charcoal lattes coming in. And he said, oh yeah, because of this year, the soap that was really on trend was donkey milk. So, so, <laughs> so I'm learning something all the time, so who knew? So, so next year, when we talk about trends really what we're talking about is fads things that will be things that people will be talking about or things that might indicate that someone's pretty cool because they're eating that thing okay so genetically modified foods have been something people try to stay away from to be to move towards the organic stuff and be more healthier within their daily lives what's next what's the next big thing to be scared of or to stay away from well i think what we're in at the moment is the is the sugar is the anti-sugar movement really so that we are really becoming aware of the power of sugar what's in sugar how does it affect us mentally physically dentally and I think we're going to still be looking at that next year it's going to get bigger so we're coming away from fruit juices and fruit smoothies going much more to vegetables and greens and anything to do with sugar really will become more and more um, anti and so new different sugars that will be coming in that will have no effect on our glycemic index that won't affect our blood sugar levels, that won't affect our teeth. That's probably the big anti-food, I suppose, will be sugar. Well, um, Morgan, we could sit here for hours and talk about food, um, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have left on our, um, this interview. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you so much.